In the previous episode, we showcased Havoc C2, how it works, and my impressions about it. By the way, if you haven't watched it, you can find it right there. But now, it's time to get Mythical. Mythical? It's time to get Mythic C2. C2 is another open source command and control framework mainly developed by Cody Thomas and recently it has a brand new update. We had like Mythic 2.3 and now it went to 3.0 with massive update about its overall structure, its overall workflow, added a bunch of stuff and make it more clean and nice to use. So when we talk about Mythic the first thing we see are in the enormous docker images we can see that it's heavily dockerized and at first i was like man i don't like docker but on the second door that's not a bad idea so let me explain the thing you see on the screen is the mythic c2 workflow i know that can sound complicated so let's try to break it down on the left hand side or actually in the middle hand side we have the ecosystem of the mythic itself we have the nginx reverse proxy we have the its own React Web UI where pretty much operators connect and use the C2 from there. We have his server GraphQL connected to PostgreSQL with MQ for data aggregation and saving. We have the Gene Web server where beacons connect to it. Then we have the Jupyter for scripting and some documentation instances. All the payloads, including payload containers, C2 profile container, webhook container, login containers, are a containers so they are dockers and everything that's exposed from the mythic itself are docker instances so for instance that thing imagine someone clicked your beacon and it triggered the apple beacon it connects to a c2 profile http smb or anything that can apple support in that case http where it connects back to the mythic infrastructure and that starts the cycle of chaining commands and working with the c2 profile now only by looking at the diagram, we can't really get the best picture of that. So, without further ado, let's jump in into the installation. The installation of the Mythic C2 is extremely easy. Since it's heavily dockerized, the installation process is as simple as running like three commands. So, first we will we would obviously need to download the source code, but before that, make sure you have Docker. The way you do that is in Kali, you can just do sudo apt get install docker.io. And that's gonna install docker push all of its dependencies and then you can install mythic after that you can obviously go on the repository sudo git clone and paste that that should be good to go after you cd into the mythic and it's all being downloaded you have to create a mythic coi file that file is responsible for coi operation with the c2 for instance getting the config file seeing the works installing agents starting the c2 stopping the c2 and pretty much anything that you can do from the coi can be done from that file it's by definition excluded from the official project source code for saving space for obvious reasons and if you want to have it you just run sudo make after you have the docker and you should be good to go after you run that command you can you're gonna end up seeing that mythic coi file so i can do sudo mythic coi do status and that shows me what is running now. We can see the containers here, Mythic Documentation, GraphQL, Jupyter, Nginx, Postgres, RabbitMQ, React, and Server. And of course, all the ports that they are listening to, and additionally, which of them are bound to localhost and which of them are not. Now, again, this can be sound a little complex, so let me just go ahead, open the browser, and log into the Mythic C2. After we run the start command, like start, all of that's gonna be present, the C2 is gonna start, and you're gonna end up having that screen here. If you are wondering for the password itself, all of the Mythic's config file is located inside a file called .env. So if I cut .env, here are all the configurations for the JWT Mythic admin password, all, all different password ports, users, and pretty much all the configs. And at first, when I was playing with Mythic, I was like, man, that's so hard. How can you go there and work with these dockers and modify anything, make configs files and so on? But the point is that they made it extremely easy by including that .env file. And in that file, this is all the configs you would ever need. So go there, inspect that file, modify the file, and if you need something, it is there. So with that, I have my password being saved here. I can do login. And as you can see, I have already some pay generated payloads, including some payload types and C2 profiles. I'm gonna show, of course, how to install this. 
So in order to do it, I'm gonna create new operations and that's the one of the most like badass cool features about Mythic. You can create different operations which has independent files, profiles and pretty much anything is independent inside. So I can do new operation, call it video, then just click submit. After that's been done, I can just do make my current operation and immediately we don't have any payloads, we don't have any works, anything because that's a brand new operation. Now let's start from the beginning. We have payload types and C2 profiles. C2 profiles means how our beacons gonna connect to our C2 infrastructure and the payload types are the exact payload that we're gonna use for connecting to the true HTTP profiles. To get that clear, imagine that this is the HTTP profile, meaning that the connections from that profile would be established over HTTP and this is the Apple agent. So these are the agent, aka beacons, and this is how beacons can connect. So having all these things together and having all these things dockerized is crucial because it is extremely customizable. You can go ahead, tweak the source code, obfuscate it, make it custom, make your own profiles and even make your own beacons. Who knows, we can do that in future. If you like the idea, make sure to hit that in the comment. Now, how to install this? Just make sure you Google Mythic C2 Apple Agent. Now go here and each Mythic C2 component has its own menu for installation and is as simple as running a command. So for instance, if you do that, Mythic CLI install GitHub from the main directory as sudo, you're gonna end up having the Apple agent. It is exactly the same as the HTTP profile, Mythic C2 profiles. So let's inspect what other profile there is. So we have the Discord, which is nice. And I think new, by the way, uh, yeah, two weeks ago, nice. Then we have HTTP, Slack, DNS, WebSocket, and Dynamic HTTP, which to be honest, I'm not sure what's the difference between them. Now, in my case, I'm using the HTTP one. So here again, you can do the very same command, mythic CLI, install GitHub, and just copy that link, and you're gonna end up having this profile here. Now, this is enough for our demo, so I'm gonna stick to that. Now, the one thing I want to mention is that in the previous versions, you had to go there, tweak the files, if you want to change the port of the HTTP profile, or get a certificate, you had to manually go there and change it. Now, it can be done from the manage file function, which is a brand new from the Mythic update. Here we can change the config file of the web server. This is where, on what port it should listen, with what certificate and what key, and should it use SSL what server header it has and so on. So it can, it has like uh, best, best editability from the user interface. With that being said, we have the Mythic C2 installed, up and running. Now let's see what this big boy can do. Now, the first thing I see and like about Mythic is the UI. Now here we have some kind of hamburger menu uh, about different services, but I, to be honest, I don't really use that. We can take a look at that later, for instance, Jupiter and so on, but for now, let's just keep it since we don't need it that much. In the C2 profiles and payload types, you can list all the your installed C2 profiles and payload types and C2, yeah? So here, if you install multiple ones, they're gonna be here, all of them, and you can manage them from here, like save, stop, delete, and so on. Now here are all the payloads we have. For instance, we can do actions, create a new payload. In that case, I have the, on, the only option to be Windows, and that's because the only payload type I have is Apple, which is a .NET 4 based. And I know it has some plus and minuses. The main plus is that it is like easy to customize and obfuscate. So you can use like Confuser EX or any other .NET obfuscator to make it like custom and hard to signature. The bad thing is that it is easily signature on runtime by memory scanners. So it's not as evasive as C++, but you know, there are many C2 profiles as we can see here, agents apologize, mythic C2 agents. So if you go there, we have a list of all the mythic agents. So if you want, go there, try as much as you want, see how they work and make sure to give feedback in my Discord server where we share exactly such knowledge and experience. Just if you haven't joined, make sure to join it now. 
All right, with that being said, uh, let's just create a payload. So in that case, I'm gonna do action, generate a new payload, go into the windows, next, then Apple, because as I said, that's the only one. And here we have the option of generating Windows executable or shell code itself. To make things simple, I don't wanna get involved in coding now. I'm just gonna go with Windows exec, click next. And now we get into a point where I super enjoy about the Mythic C2 and especially the Apple Beacon. The Apple Beacon allows you to choose your own commands and based on that, you can literally choose what the Beacon can do. Meaning that if you want, you can use that for evasiveness, you can exclude commands and that's just awesome we can see that the default commands are of course exit because the beacon would know where to exit then we have download what ps run shell and upload of course shell can be excluded because it's easily uh, flagged and so on but we can go through the list of commands and decide which one we want and which one we don't of course each command is gonna result into the size of the binary to be changed so make sure to have that in mind for the sake of the testing, I'm gonna include all of them with that button here, click next. Now, we have to choose on what C2 profiles the beacon should connect. In my case, that's the HTTP, and by clicking the HTTP, we can see the options for the HTTP profile. Now here, I'm gonna type my IP, which is 192.168.74.134. I'm gonna get the callback interval to two seconds because it's easy. The cheater percentage to 23, meaning that it's gonna add random seconds based on that initial two ones. The callback port is gonna be 443. As we saw it in my config file, I use SSL with just self signed certificates. Here you can tweak how the Mythic C2 is gonna approach the HTTP profile, meaning what URI should it, should it use, what user agent, what different headers, and so on. By default, I'm gonna stick to that just for demonstrational purposes. But if you want to achieve evasiveness and evade signature detection, you should definitely play with this one. Of course, with this and this one, because this is how the Mythic initially would send and receive data. In that case, I'm just gonna click next, give it a name, for instance, up exe, or I'm gonna just do video.exe just to make it unique, create the payload, and look how nice the UI has began became. So here we have different stage, it generates the file, then it compiles, and if we specify the shellcode, it's gonna do donut. So in that case, we're gonna skip that part, but we can see that the React JS in action. Now here it bugged a little bit, but trust me, it's an open source, it, it does not have to be perfect. With that being done, we can just download the payload like that, and then we can transfer it. Now here I'm just gonna open my download section, and here we have the video.exe file. I'm gonna host it with Python HTTP server and then go to my command VM there, open Power, uh, Firefox. It should be, of course it has to update now. Oh yeah, sugar. Then just do my IP, 132, nope it was four, yeah download video.exe and now let's just execute it run that now we have that blank screen it they did not think about making that more obscure but you know it's a c2 i i think that if you want to use the c2 especially the open source one you have to stick with the shellcode so that's not a big of a deal let's go back to the uh, mythic c2 itself go to the callback section which is that and there we are we see the callback on the callback, we have the interact button, so if you click that, you can you can have a console where we can pretty much issue a command. Then we have the IP, uh, the host, the user, the domain, if there's any, the PID of the process, then the last check-in, description, we can edit that, and then the agent, meaning that we can be sure uh, when, when multiple machines are connected, which machine are connected using which beacon. There's another nice graph view, which is found here, where it can give us more detailed context, more, uh, apologize, overall context about which beacon is connected through, through where and using what agent and so on. We can configure the graph view. I didn't play a lot with that, but I don't think that's um, that big of a deal. It's just a nice overview of the all connected beacons. Now with that, I'm gonna switch to table view real quick. And after I issue a command, by clicking here, we can see that we have uh, the output of the command. 
Now we can issue another command, for instance, power pick, and then do, let's say, IP config. Of course, it has its own method of obtaining IP address and so on, but I just wanted to showcase the power pick command. Now here it's been processing, and on the next callback we should have some output, and there we are. Alright, so here I'm gonna explain the majority of Mythic C2 commands by analyzing this help output from our beacon. I'm not gonna dive into details into all the commands because as you can see they are huge and there are a lot of them. But some of them are submodules of others, so let me explain. We have a bunch of commands for querying the registries, we have some get privilege commands and most of them are self-explanatory. We can see the net shares, we can query services, running process, jobs and so on. We can obviously upload files, change the sleep time of the beacon, meaning that if it's like 10 seconds we can make it 4, 5, 2 minutes and so on. We have the PowerP command, which is kind of different than PowerShell, and that's always my choice when I have to run PowerShell commands. What PowerP is doing, it's actually injecting the PowerShell run space into a sacrificial process, exit the command, executes the command and then just kills the process so it's like more opsec friend command and to be honest it's harder to detect so if i were to choose powershell command i'm gonna use power pick we have built-in mimic ads which is sweet and it's a sub module of execute p which can be found there so we have the execute p which by itself the name says enough executes a portable executable and there is a predefined mimic ads inside the mythic source code where it can use it with the execute p module so whenever you run mimic ads it uses that and automatically was mimic ads binary then we have what which can was well, many command into a container into the agent story we have bulk dlls dc sync which i believe is doing the same we execute p with mimic ads we predefined this sync command we have the if config which is the native apple way of actually getting the network interface and stats we have some file operations like MCAT deal. we have partial import, you can import partial scripts where you can further execute them. We have the execute assembly which is different than the execute PE. Execute assembly only works for .NET assemblies and the PE only for port portable executable. But before you run in any assembly you have to first register it using register assembly command. So the way Apple works is it needs to have registered assembly where it can further use. Alright, we, we can obviously download files, do netstat, go into different directories, do screenshots, where am I, inject the shellcode into the process, and many, many cool stuff. My best advice would be to download the agent, connect it and see what these commands are working and how, how they work and what they do. To be honest, compared to Havoc, they are more, and depends on pretty much what you like. In my opinion, Apple is working great. I know that's not the most obsec agent because first it's heavy signature, second it's C-sharp and it's not trying to be as evasive as Havoc Demon is but in the end of the day it works nice so let's move on. Let's first see the different menus and what they do. Now we already saw the payloads, now let's do into the search operation. Now from here we can see the detailed list of all the callbacks and what I mean by all the callbacks I mean that sometimes during the operation the callback might die you may hide the callback and so on they are all viewed here for instance I can go here on the listeners I can do hide callback and suddenly it should appear here nice all right so with that being said this is where you can query all the callbacks and you're gonna have a list of all the callbacks we have tasks this is all the tasks that have been issued and we can search from here so we can do who am i and i'm not sure why that search is not that is not that useful or maybe it search for the string inside the output i can try commando yeah so it searches for a string inside the output oh yeah <laughs> there's an option for that we can try command and do who am i and now we can see and find commands based on their name which is nice and can help the operators navigate their red team operation now inside files here can be all the files we store and host on the mythic c2 we can host file by clicking that button choose a file and it should be here so all the operators can download and work with it it does not expose the file to the out to the internet server to the extranet server so the beacons cannot download it just like that but i think that's not needed because you can just do download or upload from your beacon 
we have credentials this section does what it says it does when you dump credentials with mimic ads and yes the apple, the apple agent has its own mimic ads module here and if you dump credentials using that mimic ads module all the credentials will be automatically saved here and i mean all the credentials all the hashes all the cryptex passwords are automatically saved if they are not saved by accident you can just click new credential uh, save it here and you are good to go we have also option for key walks for artifacts and artifacts are pretty much anything that can leave some kind of irc in my uh, in my understanding that can be the post inject post create post queue from powerpick of course if you drop files they are also going to be saved here so you are aware what artifacts you're leaving on the system you compromise then we have the tokens which tokens are present which can be impersonated and so on we have the proxies if you do proxies to another system the proxies would be appear here we have a nice graph ui for the process like I, if I if I scan the process, uh, they should appear here, and then we have tags. So in that tags, I can just tag, let's say, a callback. I can do here, and I'm not sure where that was. I can do like, sh sh sh. let's see, on the tags, I can do new. Let's say test tag, make it red, submit, test tag, submit. And now I think I can assign, I think, callbacks to that specific task. So, but I'm not completely sure. Mm. Like that. Like that. And yeah, edit tag. And I can assign this specific callback or actually command to the tag I want. So, for instance. Yeah, I can do test tag here, I believe, or we can do new. Yeah, it's it's already there, so I can submit that, and it should be here now. So somewhere, I'm not sure what I'm doing right now. Or it's just for the graphical UI. Not sure, but yeah, yeah. All right, so it appears here. So for instance, you can create tags, and then you can assign different commands to specific tags, and you can this can make the whole operation easier, which is nice. Now, the best thing I like about Mythic, to be honest, is the reporting part. If you go over the reporting there, you can generate a, re a report in both HTML and JSON. It had PDF before, I'm not sure why they removed it, but maybe HTML is better. So, uh, we can include everything, and by the way, all the things you do are automatically mapped to Mitre attack mapping. All the things here. So, this is super useful for the reporting part. Yep. And then you can do like fetch fetch all commands, map to my and, and so on. Yeah, there we are. So during this current operation, we use that <laughs> that commands. Then we can do on the go on the report, include anything, click generate, wait a little bit of time, and the report should be finished by now. Yep, there it is. Download there, open the report, and boom, we have a complete report about anything that has happened during the operation so we have the title we have the date we have the operators we have the operators metric we have how many callbacks we had how many integrity call, high integrity callbacks how many tasks were, were issued overall which can get a nice overview of what happened during the operation then we have the information about every single callback and dude the information is super detailed like we have the user the host Everything you saw on the C2 is noted there. That's useful when you do process injection. As soon as you inject into a process using some shellcode execution and so on, this is gonna get noted there. So from which process you're executing the Apple beacon itself. Then we have the description where which we didn't set. By the way, we can set it from the listeners, from the callbacks, apologize. We can do like that. Then do edit description and make sure you edit that. And there it is now after we do that this is gonna get noted there now we have the os operational system version we have the date of the initial check-in and the last check-in due to the, the last check-in mean the date of the reporting then we have the c2 channels being http and the payload type is being apple 
so you're gonna have a nice idea of anything that was done during the operation imagine you include like 20 boxes then we have the execution duration and task information here we have the the information about all the tasks which are being run for instance we have the homi the help and the power pick ip config which are actively being mapped to a mitre attack framework so we can see a nice mitre attack overview down below we have command descriptive interpreter impaired defenses system owner user the uh, discovery and so on we have the artifacts overview so you can report even what artifacts you've left behind for the boot teamers and we have the artifacts breakthrough now the report can sound simple because you know i connected just one machine but imagine if you have 20 15 and more the reports would be massive so this is these are the base functionalities of the mythic ui itself of course make sure for you to play around with different agents see how they work which can which have more invasiveness i'm thinking of making a video about obfuscating the apple agent itself so we can try to do some av tests and so on if you are interested in doing such kind of stream or video just hit me up in discord or in the description of that video and now let's showcase some other components of the mythic c2 another cool thing i can show you guys is the jupiter framework integrated inside the mythic c2 itself so for instance if you do cat env which is the env file and grab for jupiter you can see the jupiter token is being mythic so that's the password for this page which sits on slash jupiter so i can do mythic there click login and that's gonna automatically redirect me to the jupiter page where the mythic creators have developed a bunch of examples showcasing how to use scripting language and connect to the mythic c2 in their blog posts they encourage people to start scripting and automating stuff and building stuff which is a nice effort for them and for that case they included a lot of scripts for instance file browse delete task c2 profiles for instance that's how we can create the custom instances let's say i can do the username is going to be the mythic admin i can copy the mythic password so i have catted the env file the password is there then paste it like that the ip of the server is going to be 122 168 74 134 the port is that and that's how you can connect to mythic all right now after that we can stop start stop dc2 profile and we can print the response of that so there's a method where it can start and stop the c2 profiles which is nice and then we can create a custom c2 profile so we can say my uh, my instance to be let's say uh, video instance and the parameters would be my ip 74.134 and the callback port to be 443 and the agents can be in that case both so with that being done i can just click around so we have some kind of error mythic is not defined and by mythic what do you exactly mean so here sh 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 sh, names name ever name mythic is not defined which to be honest is super strange should i run everything like that oh i think i should so like that and now with that and that should be we have success i believe with that i can connect again to my mythic c2 there i can use mythic admin again copy the password there log in now go to c2 profiles that's been stopped i can try to start it let's see if i broke it doesn't look like it i can go to the safe instances and we can see video instances been there so i can do that we can see my ip and then the user agent was i believe bob yeah there it is so with scripting we can create pretty much anything another example would be to use the what's that the callbacks and we can update callbacks get all callbacks retrieve delete and so on we can use files we can use events we can add operators operations we can add paywalls and pretty much do anything with python which to be honest is super nice i am totally thinking of doing that more and more often in the future but for now i think that's enough for now Another cool way of actually creating a new instance is by using the GUI. So we can go in the safe instances, just name it a name, make it uh, optimized for your environment, and just give it a try. 
With all that being said, I know that the Mythic Seed 2 and its infrastructure is massive and I can't just go with it in a single video, but as an impression I can say that it's a nice seed to have, it's not that intimidating as it looks at the first glance, and just make your configs into that .env file and all the dockers are gonna pull that data from it. Uh, also another thing I can say is that you, if you are intending to some way mitigate the traffic from and out of the Mythic C2, you can use the IP tables, but be sure to include the Docker plugin. So if you go to the IP tables, you can do dash L and Docker, and these are all the rules that are automatically generated from the Mythic C2. And if you want to add or delete some custom rules, make sure you do it as Docker and not as input because they are different and independent from one another. With that being said, Mythic Framework is amazing. I have enjoyed working with that. I have enjoyed using that during pen testing and other engagements. And I can highly recommend to any one of you guys which are interested into such kind of stuff. But I bet you are since you are here. With that being said, thank you all guys for watching my videos. I highly appreciate your presence on the channel and all of your likes, subscribe, comment means really a lot for me. See you in the next one.